Howdy folks, Jamboreeky here, and welcome to Jamboreeky Orange, the show where I let my patrons decide what I review. The poll choices for this month's episode included... Over the Hedge, A Wrinkle in Time, Rise of the Planet of the Apes, The Lion Guard, Return of the Roar, Sonic the Hedgehog, The Movie, and Nomeo and Juliet. They chose The Lion Guard, Return of the Roar. The Lion Guard Return of the Raw is a pilot movie for the Lion Guard TV show, which serves as a midquel to The Lion King 2. In this show, we discover that Simba and Nala had a son called Kion, an energetic cub who discovers that he has the powerful roar of the elders, meaning that he is gifted with the chance to restore the long dismantled Lion Guard. You see, years ago, Scar once had this same roar, was given the opportunity to lead the Lion Guard, who were assigned to protect the Pride Lands, but Scar abused his position of power by ordering the Guard to kill Mufasa. When the Guard disobeyed this command, Scar destroyed them with his roar, which weakened him because this power isn't supposed to be used for evil. Kion's job is to now pick the members of his Guard, and he chooses all of his friends, which include a variety of different animals. Simba is annoyed at this, demanding that Kion picks only lions instead. However, Kion and his friends end up proving that Kion's guard member choices were actually well decided, when they end up having to defend the Pride Lands from invading hyenas. I'll admit that die-hard Lion King fans may not like the direction that this pilot takes the franchise in. First, there's the drastically different art style, which still retains the essence of the movie's designs, but goes for a more cutesy look in comparison. I can imagine this annoying some people, who might consider these changes to be too infantile compared to the films. Also, there's a bit of a whiplash to seeing the animation going from hand-drawn to computer-generated, and it could be a tad weird adjusting to this transition. Even after getting used to it, though, there's something a little off about this animation, as if we can see the rigs ticking away, trying to add fluidity to the characters, but feeling limited to its software's restrictions. This special opens up with a big plot hole right from its premise, too. Where was Kion in Lion King 2? Did he die? Did he move to another pride? The show will have to answer this question in its last episode, or it'll inevitably end up creating a huge continuity error in the franchise. Also, when Scar murdered the guard, why didn't the rest of the kingdom immediately raise concern and suspicion about him? They would have noticed that the guard was missing lions, and the only surviving guard member was Scar. How long did it take for the kingdom to catch on? The film never says that Scar tried to cover up the murders, so the evidence is practically screaming at the lions. Please don't tell me that it took until Mephasa's death for the kingdom to realize that, hey, maybe Scar has murderous intentions. Considering how the guard murders left behind obvious clues about his true nature. A later episode will need to explain how Scar got away with this crime, or it'll end up making the kingdom look foolish. Anyway, let's discuss the returning characters in this pilot. Kiara is now written as an uptight older sister who takes the role of becoming queen very seriously. Because I'm training to be queen of the Pride Lands. Yeah, yeah, I know all about it, Kiara. <laughs> At least I have my life figured out. Which is quite out of character, as Kiara was always more focused on her passions for hunting and exploring than her destiny in royalty. Darling, with your complexion, you should stay out of the sun. What? Do you want a wrinkle? Will somebody please just listen to me? I'm sorry, I wasn't listening. Did you say something, princess? I'm not just a princess, you know. That's only half of who I am. This pampered daddy's little girl take on Kiara could become grating as episodes go on, unless we discover that this is just a short phase in her growing up arc. Simba is mainly in the pilot to give a backstory to the guard and serve as a naysayer for Kion's unconventional team choices. His prejudices against other animals joining the Lion Guard make sense, because Simba is capable of bigotry, as demonstrated in the second film. However, much like that chapter of this franchise, it's Simba's offspring that teaches him to be more open-minded about other races. Although, did Simba really need to end up learning this same lesson twice? Timon and Pumba are back too, playing babysitter as usual and actually doing a decent job this time. But what's weird is that they are sort of guardians to a honey badger called Bunga. 
it's never explained how or why they adopted him, which is super strange, but perhaps we'll get a backstory for this setup in a later episode. What about the new characters though? Are they any likeable? Personally, I only thought Bunga, who serves as a comic relief for the show, was obnoxious. He's always loudly shouting about his excitement over everything. This is unbungalievable! Trying way too hard to force his catchphrase into a thing. It's Zukazama! Zukazama! and randomly mentioning his Uncle Timon and Pumba at every chance. You know what my uncles always say? Hakuna Matata. Can you show that trick to my Uncle Timon and Uncle Pumba? I can't wait to tell Uncle Timon and Uncle Pumba! <laughs> he's picked for the guard because he's supposedly the bravest, but there's a difference between bravery and being a reckless idiot. The other young animals, though, seem laid back and down to earth. I wouldn't mind spending lots of episodes with them. Fully the cheetah stands out the most, bringing some sass to the lion guard dynamic. The lion guard? Figures. Always the lions lording over the pride lands. I suppose Simba put you in charge of this little team, Kion. You bet your spots he did! Kion serves as your typical youthful protagonist. He has a bit of an ego, but he's sensible enough to know right from wrong. He's not really much different from young Simba, but maybe later episodes can help define him as his own character. In terms of story, the pilot kind of meanders around, introducing each Lion Guard member and showing the hyenas plotting their evil inside a cave. It does make the movie a bit of a slog to sit through. Because really, this story is too paper thin to warrant a 40 minute running time. But the movie picks up pace once the hyenas arrive in the Pride Lands, queuing an energetic finale that demonstrates what Kion and his friends can do as a team during a time of crisis. The special also features three original songs. One number is supposed to be another Akuna Matata, except this time it has no value in the story. It's obnoxiously performed by Bunga and it's dedicated to his over-mentioned catchphrase Zukazama. I'm sorry, but the more often you make him say his motto, the less charmingly catchy it becomes. When life throws you a crazy curve. Tonight We Strike, a song sung by the hyenas, is trying to recapture Be Prepared, but it's about as intimidating as a nursery rhyme, right down to the silly laughing noises. We go where we want when we want to, and we eat as we eat as we please. That Kion can't give us a curfew! Or tell us to stay in the trees! No! Tonight we strike! Tonight we strike! Lastly, there's It Is Time, which does sincerely show Kion struggling to realise if he's even ready to take on the Lion Guard role. But it sadly sounds nothing like a Lion King musical sequence and is more reminiscent of a Disney Channel song, the kind of number you'd expect in something like High School Musical, which makes it sound incredibly out of place. Now what, what should I do? And who, who do I turn to? When it comes down to it, The Lion Guard was clearly packaged for very small children, hence why it was aired on the preschool channel Disney Junior. But is that a bad thing? Well, while I get that these changes would upset older fans of the franchise, I can't say that this is a harmful or insulting show for little kids. I mean, the redesign is perfect for small boys and girls who usually love cutesy fluffy animals because they look so cuddly and friendly to them. Also, the idea of children being empowered as a team in a world run by adults would seem like a fun fantasy to preschool kids, especially at an age where they feel like they can't do much and maybe even idolise superheroes. Plus, while the songs aren't faithful to the tone and spirit of the Lion King films, I can totally understand why very little kids would enjoy them, as they are very catchy, goofy and upbeat. Not to mention, Return of the Roar includes some pretty valuable lessons for little kids like respecting nature, as the special teaches the importance of not over-consuming what the environment offers. 
My dad says we should only take what the pride needs to keep the circle of life in balance. If we took down gazelles just to learn how to do it, pretty soon there wouldn't be any left. This also helps the villainization of the Outlanders make sense, because they break the code of the circle of life by greedily eating everything they can, thus bringing in balance to the savannah. There's also a message about accepting other races, with Kion immediately choosing his guard from a variety of different animals. Never seeing this as wrong or unnatural, implying that he doesn't have the same kind of prejudices as his father. Foreshadowing how this generation of lines is set to take away oppression from the Pride Lands one day. To conclude, the Lion Guard Return of the Raw isn't exactly the most faithful or mature way to carry on the Lion King story. So I understand hardcore fans rage over it, and to be honest, you could even criticize the premise for using the Lion King to capitalize on the current superhero trend. Especially when Disney had the opportunity to come up with original characters for this concept, but ignored it, to maybe seize a chance to cash in on the Lion King brand. However, when you brush aside these issues, this special seems like a decent pilot for a Disney Junior show. It has good lessons to teach, fantasies that preschool kids can relate to, and a vibrantly friendly visual design. Trust me, I get why diehard fans would hate this pilot, but from an objective point of view, I have to admit that the target audience will get a lot out of this special. I've been Jamboreek and I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, then feel free to subscribe to my channel. So, what am I going to be reviewing in the next episode of Jamboree Key Orange? Well, that's entirely up to my patrons. The poll choices for next month's episode include... Simbad, Legend of the Seven Seas. Descendants 2. Tom and Jerry, The Magic Ring. The Avengers. The Secret Life of Pets. And The Illusionist. Some pretty exciting options there, am I right? So, keep in mind that only patrons can access the poll. What is a Patreon? Don't worry, I'll explain. This is my Patreon. It's a site for my fans to make monthly donations to me. Those who donate are called Patrons. The money I receive goes towards funding my videos and serves as a supportive income for me. Patrons can donate as much as they want each month and stop donating any time. All donations are greatly appreciated, and in return for their patronage, patrons are given exciting rewards, depending on how much they donate, including their names credited in my main show, access to exclusive videos, and the chance to decide a review on my channel. I'm very excited to find out which film I'll be reviewing next on this show. Cheerio, folks. Mm -hmm.